Hi everyone, my name is Noelle and I am a graduate student from the University of Minnesota. So for my presentation, I will be discussing spatial and temporal variabilities of manure composition in a commercial turkey barn. So to start with some background, my research actually focuses on using mass balance approaches to estimate gas emissions from livestock systems. Um, this type of approach is reliant on high quality data and representative samples to obtain accurate emission values. Um, so in the turkey barn, a significant emission source is the manure, the composition of which may differ spatially based on the accumulation and distribution of the manure, which can also be influenced by farm management styles as well as bird behavior, um, which is why the objective for this work was to identify the spatial and temporal, temporal variabilities of manure composition. Um, we hypothesize that this may have implications on manure sampling procedures for emission estimation using a mass balance approach. So moving on to figure one, we divided the barn area into seven different lanes based on the position of the waterer and feeder lanes, as well as the middle of the barn. We divided this into three different lanes based off of existing litter, dis litter distribution. So for sampling, we collected composite samples from each of these lanes every one to four weeks during the grow out period. And then we analyzed these samples for moisture, nitrogen, volatile solids, and ash. And the results of that are shown in the graphs in the middle of the poster. So we indicated the results from the waterer lanes using the blue lines, and then the feeder lanes using the yellow lines, and then finally the middle of the barn area lanes using these dotted peach lines. So starting with the two graphs on the top, uh, looking at moisture and ash content, um, looking at moisture, we see that the moisture content in the waterer and feeder lanes are larger than the moisture content in the middle of the barn area. On the graph on the right, we see the opposite trend where the ash concentration values in the middle of the barn area lanes are higher than the ash content values at the waterer and feeder lanes. The volatile solids results are not actually pictured here. However, it does share the same trend as the ash, um, the ash content values or the ash concentration values. We also ran a two-way ANOVA, which revealed significant differences in position and time for moisture content and volatile solids, but only significant differences in position for the ash values. The ANOVA results also indicated um, significant interaction effects between the sampling date and position for ash, vol volatile solids, and moisture content which supports what we see in these top two graphs where the changes in the um, composition or the concentration are most apparent in the first um, 14 days of sampling. The nitrogen results are depicted in this bottom graph over here. Here we observe a general decline in nitrogen concentration values in all lanes in the barn up to day 28. Um, and then we see a positive trend between day 28 and day 56. Um, it's also important to note that there was a bedding addition that occurred around day 28, um, which might further explain this decrease in the nitrogen concentration on that day. Um, generally higher concentrations or higher nitrogen concentrations are observed in the middle of the barn area lanes in these peach, peach colored lines as compared to the waterer and feeder lanes. Um, these observations are also supported by results from a two-way ANOVA, which revealed significant differences by position and time, um, but the interaction effects were not significant. So to summarize, the purpose of this work was to identify spatial and temporal variabilities of manure composition in the turkey barn. Um, these results will be used or will be applied to a mass balance to calculate the nitrogen and methane emissions from the turkey barn. Um, finally, uh, just some acknowledgements, this research was supported by the Rapid Agricultural Response Fund, 
And we'd also like to express appreciation to the farmer cooperators who helped us with data collection and data observation. Thank you.